Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Friday. It's the optional memorial of St. Margaret Mary Alacoque, a great devotee of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. As you know, our Lord, under that appearance of his Sacred Heart, appeared to St. Margaret Mary Alacoque in her convent chapel and told her about the promises of the Sacred Heart, especially on the first Fridays. So we get first Fridays from St. Margaret Mary Alacoque. Most Catholic schools have Mass on First Friday for this devotion of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Let us always remember to come to Him, we who labor and are burdened about many things and have rest in Him, especially during this pandemic, during this election, during our own kind of troubles and worries, anxieties and fears, we should go to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, like a child with full confidence that our Father will take care of us. St. Margaret Mary Alacoque, pray for us. Sacred Heart of Jesus, I place my trust in thee. Well, everyone, I'm continuing my series on the Sacrament of Confirmation. I want to talk about confirmation that um, you and I can delve into its sacramental mystery. So we already spoke uh, a couple days about it. I know you heard Deacon Jonathan yesterday speak about the third part of Holy Orders, the Episcopacy. Remember, there's three layers of Holy Orders, diaconate, priesthood, and the Episcopacy, or bishops. Deacon, priest, and bishop. There's a threefold nature of the Sacrament of Holy Orders and how Christ calls men to that sacrament. And I'm grateful for deacons around the world our own Deacon Don, Deacon Jonathan. I'm grateful for all my brother priests, and I'm grateful for all of our bishops, especially our Archbishop, Archbishop Nelson Jesus Perez. How grateful we are for all of these men who are called by Christ to do his work. That's a beautiful gift. Well now, coming today, I'm gonna to pick up with confirmation. And I'm going to talk to you about the matter and form of the sacraments. I know I spent a lot of time with this with the children in school, so I want to talk to you about it. So every sacrament has matter and form so that it constitutes a sacrament. In other words, matter plus form equals sacrament. Did you know that? Matter plus form equals sacrament. So for instance, what is the matter for baptism? Water. What is the form or formula for baptism? The pouring of the water over the person's head and saying, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Never to say, we baptize you in the name of the Father. That would be invalid. We understand that very clearly and the church has made that crystal clear in her documents that we should never say, a deacon, priest, or a bishop should never say, we baptize you in the name of the Father. Why? Because every minister of the sacrament is Christ. And the deacon or priest or bishop stand in the person of Christ. So I baptize you. Do you see what I mean? I baptize. It's Christ who's doing this. And once we forget that, then the sacraments are very blurred and they're not crystal clear. So the matter and the form of the sacrament, you need matter and form in order to receive a sacrament. You need water and the formula is the pouring of the water over the person's head by stating, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And then you'll be able to receive the sacrament of, of baptism validly. The Holy Spirit comes upon the person, grace is infused into the soul, and baptism takes away original sin, makes you a member of Christ's body, the church, and an heir to the kingdom of heaven. Remember what Jesus says, unless you become, unless you're born of water and of the Holy Spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Yikes. Unless you're born of water and the Holy Spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. That's a direct command of Jesus. 
So we need to have our children baptized. Do you know anybody who's not baptized? Please bring them our way. Please allow them to see the face of God in the sacraments. Remember, the sacraments are encounters with the risen Christ. Real encounters with the risen Christ. Now, who can be the minister of the sacrament of baptism? Well, a deacon, a priest, or a bishop. In an emergency, anyone. In an emergency, anyone can baptize if they do it as the church intends, by taking water, pouring it over the person's head, and saying, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In an emergency, in an emergency, the ordinary ministers of the sacrament are deacon, priest, and bishop for baptism. But in an emergency, anyone, even someone who is not a believer. Let's say you're in a hospital. You know, the doctor who delivered me is of the Jewish faith. If my mother had complications in her pregnancy and during the delivery, and she said to Dr. Coingsburg, who was my doctor, Dr. Abraham Coingsburg, to be exact, and she said to him, Doctor, if there is complications in my delivery, please make sure that you have water next to you, and please pour it over my child's head, saying, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Do you know that would be a valid sacrament? Even for a non-believer, a non-believer in Christianity, a non-Christian, it would be valid because he or she does what the church intends. So I'm talking about, of course, baptism. And I want to talk to you about baptism because we could dive into confirmation next because confirmation completes baptism. Did you know that? So the next thing is the, the three modalities of baptism. Let's talk about that. What are the three modalities of baptism? Well, the first and foremost is that baptism of water, right? You must baptize with water. But how about when we talk about baptism of blood? We're talking about those people who die for the faith, those babies who are aborted. They're baptized in their own blood. So do not have a fear, maybe parents or grandparents or relatives or friend about babies who have been aborted. They are baptized in their blood. It's like the Holy Innocents. Remember the Holy Innocents? Absolutely. God himself is merciful and loving. And that, their blood would baptize those children. So we have the baptism of water, which is the ordinary experience and the new ordinary sacramental occurrence for that sacrament. Then we have baptism of blood. People who die for the faith, but they were not baptized yet. People who die in the womb. Now let's do the next one. Baptism of desire. Right now at St. Mary's Parish, we have two people who are catechumens. Do you know who they are? Do you know what a catechumen is? A catechumen is someone who has not been baptized yet as an adult. So there are two adults who are now in what is called RCIA, the Rite of Christian Initiation of Adults. Well, how about if they die before they're baptized? Baptism of desire. So baptism of water, baptism of blood, baptism of desire. So here we have the matter for the sacrament of baptism, water. The form, the pouring of the water over the head and saying the words, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And then, who is the minister of the sacrament? Well, a deacon, a priest, or a bishop. But in an emergency, anyone, even a non-believer. So, always remember that matter plus form equals sacrament. Let's say that again. Matter plus form equals sacrament. And that's always, always to remind ourselves that we are united to Christ and we have the gift of salvation through baptism. In fact, when the priest or the deacon or bishop asks the parents, what do you ask of the church? 
Most of them say baptism. But when you, when we ask them, what do you ask of the church for your child? You know what they could say? Salvation. Salvation. I desire salvation for my child. Maybe we should use that more often because we see it not only as a sacrament, but as a necessary means for salvation. And I don't know if we always think of that. Now, outside of the pandemic, we would always go into churches or chapel and put our hand in holy water and bless ourselves to remind ourselves of this great gift of the sacrament of baptism. We use the sacramental of holy water. See, the, the difference between a sacrament and a sacramental. A sacramental reminds us of the sacraments. They are not the sacrament, but they remind us. So when you bless yourself with holy water, remember of your baptism. So, I want to, excuse me, I want to uh, ask you a question. Oh, thank you. It's a little refreshing. So, I want to ask you a question. Who were your godparents? Do you know your godparents? I want to ask you another question. What month and year were you baptized? I want to ask you another question. What church were you baptized in? What parish? There's only one church. Okay, what's the name of the priest or deacon that baptized you? Are you having trouble with these questions? Well, it's a little bit of homework for you. Please try to figure that out. I think that's very important to know these encounters with the risen Christ and to know them and to be proud of who you are as a baptized Catholic, as a Christian, a follower of Jesus Christ. That's what is a Christian. A Christian is a follower of Jesus Christ, a baptized follower of Jesus Christ. When did you become a Christian? At baptism. Absolutely. I was baptized August of 1962 by Father Anthony Rossi in the Church of Our Lady of Loretto. And my godparents, Joseph Rendy and Jen Rendy. I know that because I see my certificate and I'm, I'm aware of that. But it's good that you, you know all that too. Just to know your baptismal life as a follower of Jesus. My baptismal life. I'm a baptized believer of Jesus Christ. I've been born again through water and the Holy Spirit. See, see, Catholics are born again. <laughs> You're born again, aren't you? By water and the Holy Spirit. It's good. It's all good things that we need to hold dear to us. Now, tomorrow I'm going to talk to you about the matter and the form of confirmation. Because I want you to start working on that now so that tomorrow when I speak to you in the daily reflection, you'll know what is the matter for confirmation and what is the form? And what is confirmation? Because we talked about it before, but I want to like connect it to the sacraments of, because baptism and confirmation go hand in hand, okay? Well, today is the optional memorial of St. Margaret Mary Alacoque, who has given us the promises of Jesus of the Sacred Heart of Jesus in particular. And we remember her in a particular way. She was a visitation nun. Do you know of the Order of the Visitation, a cloister community who, uh, believe it or not, we have that order still in Philadelphia. Do you know where they're located? Oh, sure, they're located on City Line Avenue. I believe in the 5700 block of City Line Avenue, the visitation nuns. So. They're still around, and I'm so grateful that we have them here in the Archdiocese of Philadelphia. May God be praised, and may the Sacred Heart of Jesus console us in our troubles and our worries, especially during this time of the pandemic, during this time of the election. May Christ comfort us and give us his peace. Have a nice day, everybody.